Good morning. If, um, we, if you're watching this, uh, if you're with us, you're probably with us at home uh, because I'm in this building all by myself this morning. I'm having to run the sound equipment, and I, so I, I hope everything's working. Hope you can hear me, um, and I hope that uh, we can, I can answer some questions that you might have this morning, and that we can dive into the Lord's Word and see what He has to say for, for us being in, in a time like this. So uh, what I want to do before we get started is I want to pray for us, and then, uh, then we're going to jump into um, um, the Word, if you will. So let, let's pray. Lord, we thank You that You are uh, in control that even when we don't have answers, even when plans don't uh, line up the way we thought they should, even when, when our plans fall through, uh, Lord, you are there. You are our sustainer. You keep us. You, you, Lord, you protect us. You are our fortress and our shield. You are a strong tower, Lord. Lord, you um, have not forsaken us. You will never leave us. Remind us of these truths, Lord, um, because sometimes... Sometimes it's easy to forget them. But, Lord, you remind us of who you are, what you've done for us. Show us your grace as you continue to do. We know you do that, Lord, but continue to do so. Uh, just pour your grace out upon us. Would you strengthen us as a church? Allow us to gather back together soon, Lord. Um, Lord, again, we, we come to you this morning uh, wishing we were doing this a little bit different. But, um, but we trust you. Would you just... Lord, help us in our, in our um, unbelief this morning. We believe, Lord, but, but help our unbelief. Would you, would you lead us and guide us and be glorified by all that we do? And would you bring us back together soon? Lord, we love you. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so what's the deal? Maybe most of you know by now, we've, we had, since past, this past Sunday, we've had four positive cases uh, among our group who were pretty active um, here last Sunday. Um, although we have no, we, we don't know. We have no idea if people are contagious Sunday. We don't, we have no idea. We can't trace it back that far. Uh, the first positive um, case came back on Wednesday. That was a youth leader. Uh, and then Mary um, tested, who worked with Vine Kids, tested positive on Thursday. Uh, and so we went back and alerted everybody, and we've had a couple more people who were associated with our Vine Kids program uh, test positive, I believe, on Friday. My household is really crazy right now. Mary's positive. We're waiting test results for our girls, and I'm negative, which makes no sense at all uh, because I come in contact with far more people than she does and am much more careless uh, than she is. And so we, we don't... We, we, we don't know how, um, how this works, but I think that's the same boat everybody's in. And I look back and I think, man, for a year, the Lord sustained us and he's kept us. And we've, we had to stop meeting initially about a year ago when everybody else did. But when we started rolling outside, we, we had beautiful weather. We could go outside. When we started moving back inside, we took a couple of weeks off in some, some peak seasons for, for COVID. But for the most part, we've been able just to keep going. And I know there are many of you who have had this um, virus who have dealt with it or have quarantined for extended amounts of time. So it's affected us, but the Lord's allowed us just to keep going and not had anything going on in the church. And, and to, over, to use an overused um, phrase right now, out of an abundance of, of caution, and you've probably heard that many times, out of an abundance of caution, we have decided to not meet today and, um, and hopefully... Uh, we'll, we'll join back in, in a week or so, um, I, although I'm quarantined for what looks like 20 days or maybe even long. Um, so that's how we got here. We had some tests pop up. We really we just want to be careful. We want to make sure that we're careful. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at. Um, and so, this, so today, there, there are no activities here today. Um, our Vine Kids program, of course, is not going to meet. And, and, and so our Vine students are not going to meet tonight. Uh, we're not having worship service. Again, I'm in here by myself. Uh, there's no one in here. It's very lonely. Um, but but um, I know you're watching at home, and so um, that, that helps me out. Uh, but, but also, no, no activities this week. No women's Bible study on Tuesday. No prayer gathering on Wednesday. And then we're going to send some information out this week about next weekend. Um, we are hoping that next weekend you can have worship service here. And I say you because I will not be able to be here. I'll be quarantined. But... As it turns out, um, Jackson Brock was already scheduled to preach next week anyway. And so if, if we can work it out and we feel safe, 
he'll, he'll preach next week, just continuing in Luke. Um, and then um, maybe, Lord willing, I can be back here in two weeks, uh, which is what we hope. And, and so we'll, we'll roll with that if we can. But for the next week, we are completely down. We'll be sending out information uh, to let you know what's going on. But that's where we're at. That is not where we want to be. I mean, let's just, let's just be honest. And so you may be asking, well, what can we do? What, we've had tons of phone calls, tons of texts. What can we do? Well, here's what you can do. Number one, pray. Let's pray for all those affected by this uh, virus, um, as we have been the entire time. But let's, let's, let's pray for those uh, who are impacted by it, who either are positive right now. Um, and there are at least four in our, in our group that, that are positive. And then um, the families of those affected as well, because quarantining is not easy. We're like day three into quarantining at my house. And um, yeah, that's, I mean, some of you know, I mean, that's not, not a lot of, of um, you know, you run out of things to do pretty quickly. But anyway, it is what it is. We deal with it. So could you just pray uh, for that? Just continue to pray like we've been praying for you. This would all be over soon. Um, and then um, as far as anything else goes, uh, when we're able to, to get back together, let me tell you one thing that we found out. Wearing those masks, probably, if by chance there was um, someone here that was contagious on Sunday, wearing the mask helped prevent this from being uh, a complete shutdown or having more people infected or more people quarantining. So let's, uh, let's I mean, I complain about those masks. And I know we don't like wearing those masks, but you know what? We can, we can wear those masks for an hour a week if it means that uh, we won't have an outbreak or make anybody sick. So just help support us by continuing to wear masks on Sundays. Um, we appreciate that. And pretty much every time we meet, um, so when we're able to meet again. So you can do that. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your, your thoughts and, and your prayers and continue to do that. We would appreciate that for, not, for our church, for our family, for the other families that are impacted. And so uh, with that, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. When I, <clears throat> when I found out, well, there was a lot of work that went into today uh, because we had planned on gathering and celebrating 10 years. Man, this is our 10-year anniversary. We had, we had planned on gathering and doing that, and we were so excited. We had a lot of good things planned. And um, when, that, when that became evident, when it became evident that that was not going to happen, um, I have to be honest, like, I had no idea what to do with today. Uh, I struggled. I sat around home pretty much because I can't go anywhere. But I sat around home and I, I just I had no clue where we I was going to go with this with this service where I was going to go with the passage, what I wanted to share, where I wanted to be. I, I just struggled for words because here, here's what I knew: we were on a mountaintop, man. We were on a mountaintop. I mean, let's be honest, things were not going good. They were going great. I mean, I was bubbling over with excitement. Well, I mean, as much as I bubble over. I mean, those of you who know me know I probably was not necessarily bubbling over. But, but I was bubbling over as much as I possibly could bubble over um, with excitement that, that, man, we had so many good things going. We were going to celebrate our 10-year anniversary and just looking back at what the Lord had done. I'd written that sermon. And I was so excited about sharing those the, just thoughts with you and we we're so excited about that so much work went in we had some special things going to happen and we had to kind of scrap all that we were just on this mountaintop we had a great vine kids beginning last sunday night i mean it was just people left we were texting each other saying how much we enjoyed it how much the kids enjoyed it we were hearing feedback from the kids and what they were talking about i heard from parents this week about their kids singing and doing and doing these hand motions that we did during these some of these songs i mean it was just an exciting time. The youth had a great group of students were out there and they're building again and they were enjoying that and everything was great. I mean, there was just so many good things. We had a, we had a men's Bible study on Wednesday night. They had a, a, a great group here. We were able to share and talk about that study and really just a good time looking forward to that. Women Bible study is supposed to start this week. I mean, we were, I mean, beyond excited. I mean, like I said, I was bubbling over, man. I was just, I was ready. I just, I married and I talked about it. It's like we... We feel like we've done what we had to do for a year. We've taken the precautions. We're wearing masks. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We, we just feel like this is the time. We just, we just really have. I mean, last Sunday, our worship service was unbelievable. I mean, I just, I, I loved it. I mean, I had so many people tell me how, how much they enjoyed last Sunday, the music and everything, and just, just I mean, just being together. And, and, and then 
And then we, we, we get this hiccup, or, or I don't even know what to call it. And this is not how we planned it. This, this, is, this is not how it's supposed to be. It's a reminder of brokenness, yes. But, but I mean, this is not what's supposed to happen. We were on the mountaintop. We were moving forward. We, we just, you know, there was new friendships and new bonds and new, just, just I mean, just family, a family of faith gathering together. We were just excited. We are moving forward, man, to think about just where I thought we were headed and where we are headed, but with the hiccup, but just, you know, just plans in my mind running a thousand miles an hour about we could do this, this. And I sent out this week about a mission emphasis to start a, a food pantry. Man, we're excited. There's just so many good things going on. And then this happens and our plans, are, well, they don't, they don't mean as much anymore because some of them are table. They're not happening right now. That's hard. It's not easy to deal with. That's, that's, that's difficult, man, when you leave here and you're so excited and then you leave here on a Tuesday night and you're so excited and by like 24 hours later, like the rug's pulled out from under you 24 more hours and it's like, wow, this is, I mean, this is worse than we thought and then continuing on and having to take some time away and, you know, we need to see each other. We want to see each other. Today was the day we were going to celebrate being together and we can't even be together. And that was... Um, it's a bit disheartening. We've used words like that this week. Disheartening, disappointed. You know, um, it's tough. It's not easy. Uh, I have asked more than one time this week, Lord, what, what are you doing? What, what's the plan? I mean, it's, my plan is certainly not going to work. And I believe there's a reason for that. But what's your plan? And you, you start to question, God, where, where are you taking us? I mean, what? what what was what was going? What were we doing wrong? What what happened there? I mean, I don't, you know, maybe we weren't doing anything wrong, but what what are you doing here? Because I don't really understand where to go or what to do or how this is working out or why we just couldn't stay on the mountain. I mean, we liked it on the mountaintop, but you know, we we were not there anymore right right now this week, and so it's we're not where we want to be. And so you ask God, what what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and i got to tell you, uh, if I sound down, I'm not. I'm not. I, and you'll see in a minute. But I want to clarify that. But this is where I was at earlier, you know, a couple of days ago. Just, Lord, what, what are we doing? What are you doing? And what are we supposed to do now? And really just, Lord, what are you doing? And, um, and it was then, over the past couple of days, that... I was reminded of a couple of passages of Scripture that may not mean anything to you, uh, but that hit home to me. It's very odd. Um, not odd. It's not odd. It's, um, it's good. It's good how sometimes when we are in the middle of, of a time when we're not quite sure what's going on, how the Lord's word just comes back to us. And it might not be we remember it, although I think that's a, a good reason why we study scripture is so that in times like this, we can fall back on that scripture. But also we're reminded by other people or by things we see on TV or things that we see, you know, we read in a, in a book or whatever or that someone mentions to us or we hear on the radio. And this week I was reminded of two passages that just, that just resonated with me. And I needed them. And so I want to tell you a little bit about those. Um, and we're going to be here. It's not going to be long. But I just want to tell you a little bit about those. I was reminded this week about Habakkuk. Many of you maybe um, have Facebook. I, I don't know who does. Um, it, it's, it's a good tool. It could be the devil. We don't know. Um, jury's still out. But anyway, uh, I digress. But, but Facebook, I posted um, a Billy Graham sermon excerpt from like 1973. And it just hit home to me, and I, that passage, I went back and looked that passage up because it was just, we, we talked through, we, we worked through Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, which is not a very well-known or much-discussed book, I don't think, um, anymore or ever. Um, I don't ever remember hearing the sermon on it when I was growing up, but Habakkuk, we studied that a few years ago. Habakkuk is about this guy, a prophet, who sees, along with all of God's people, God's people suffering. Matter of fact, they're not just suffering, they're, they're suffering at the hands of their enemies. Their enemies are winning. And Habakkuk comes to God and is like, God, what are you doing? And God tries to explain to him that Israel has 
um, has rejected me and I'm punishing them. Um, and then he's like, but you're using these evil people. And he's like, I'm going to punish them too. And, and you're starting to see as you're reading Habakkuk that Habakkuk is asking these questions and God's answering Habakkuk. But Habakkuk just does not have the ability to understand exactly what God's doing. He just, he just cannot understand when God tells Habakkuk what the plan is and tries to unpack it for him. Habakkuk is more confused or, or at least as confused as he was to begin with. And so you see this dialogue back and forth between Habakkuk and God. And Habakkuk's like, why are you doing this? And God says, this is the reason. And Habakkuk's like, why are you doing this? And God's like, this is the reason. And finally, finally in that book, Habakkuk kind of just says, okay, wait a minute. And he makes this statement. And the statement in that book is, the righteous shall live by faith alone. Now, if you know anything about that statement, that statement appears numerous times in the New Testament as well. It shows up like four more times in Scripture, three or four more times in Scripture. And um, Paul spends some time unpacking that statement. And what Habakkuk is saying is, I don't understand. I don't understand what God's doing. I don't understand. I don't, I, I don't understand why it's happening exactly this way. I don't understand why this is the plan. I don't understand why, this, why we're doing it this way. I do not understand that. Um, you know, he's, he's saying, I, I don't understand that. But what, what he's saying is, after he kind of says, I don't understand that, Habakkuk rests on, even though I don't understand, really what I need to do is just trust the Lord. So, so Habakkuk rests in, I don't understand, what, you, what are you doing, God? And God tells him, and what are you doing, God? And God tells him, and I, don't underst- I still don't understand but even though I don't understand, my job is not to understand. My job is just to trust the Lord, regardless if we know the plan or not. Regardless if we understand the plan or not. Regardless if, if it lines up with our plans or not. Habakkuk tells us the righteous live by faith. If we are followers of God, then we live by faith. We trust the Lord. We put our faith in God. We put our trust in Him, and we don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to know why it didn't work out the way we wanted it to work out. We don't have to know why we were on that mountaintop, and now we're off. Um, we can't meet this week. We don't have to know that while last week we were up here thinking, man, this is the greatest thing in the world. We can't wait for the next few weeks. can't wait for the 28th to celebrate why we can't gather together. We don't have to know why. We don't, we don't have to know why. What we have to do is trust the Lord. We don't need all the answers. We just need to trust the Lord. That's so hard. That's not easy. I'm not saying I've got it all figured out. I don't. Um, this wasn't how we planned it. This wasn't where I wanted to be today. or It's where I wanted to be today. This is not how I wanted to be here today. I wanted to be celebrating with you 10 years of the Vine Fellowship and of that family that's here and what the Lord's done with us. But we can't. And when part of me just wants to scream and say, what are you doing, God? When I don't understand it, I just have to trust him. I sent somebody a text this week when they, I think we were texting back and forth about this and it was like, everything was going so well and I was like, we just have to believe that God has this. That's hard to, it's easy to say, but that's the truth. Like we have to believe God's got this. God has this. He has it. This isn't a surprise to him. He didn't wake up like to Thursday morning and be like, man, somebody's positive? Whoa, and then Friday morning, wait, a couple more people are positive? What? No, man, I didn't see this coming. I was like, he wasn't like disappointed that, that the thing got canceled today, but our celebration, he knew that. Like, like God knew that. Like, like, he wasn't surprised at that. I mean, God's not surprised. We're not surprising God. Like, no, no test is coming back surprising God. So, so, we trust him. He's got it. He's in control. He has it. Habakkuk has been so helpful to me the last couple of days because I want answers. But like Habakkuk, the answers we get, we can't understand. We can't understand them. We don't even have all the answers. God's not giving us all the answers because we wouldn't know what to do with them. He could give us all the answers and we're still not going to understand it. So what we do is we just trust. 
We just trust. We just put our faith in him. So there's one passage that I hope, if you want to go read Habakkuk or have questions about Habakkuk, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about that, or you can read through that. And then another passage that really brought me comfort this week. Um, man, because here's, here's what I was thinking, not just, because you know, whenever, whenever this happened, uh, at the end of the week, like I started just reliving all the past year, and it's a mess. I mean, this past year's been a mess, right? That's just putting it really mildly. Like, I don't know. It just... You get news that our, that our family, our faith family, is impacted over this past year directly by this virus. It's been a tough year. Tough year for some of you. I know that. Some of you have lost loved ones because of this virus. I mean, it's been tough. Some of you have dealt with it directly. You've been, you've been sick. Some of you are very sick. Some of you have, have had extended amounts of time where you've been quarantined. Some of your kids have been, well, all of our kids have been out of school, some, but some of your kids have been out of school quite a bit. Man, that's not easy. I know that's not easy. That's not fun. I mean, we're looking at 24 days for, for um, one of our girls, probably both of our girls, where they can go back to school. I mean, that's just unreal, like 24 days a month. Like, we'll see you in a month. Like, we'll see you at Easter. That's not going to be easy. I mean, I'll be honest, like, finding out that, that Mary was, um, was, was positive was a shocker to me. Like, doesn't make any sense, and it's diff- It's not easy to deal with. Like, you don't, you don't want to see your family and friends be sick. You don't want to see them to have this, this virus, you know? I'm thinking that I was going to be positive. I was certain that I would be positive. And I still may end up being, but, but I don't know. But, you know, um, but, but thinking I was going to be positive, that was not easy. You know, just sitting here knowing she was positive, having to wait a day to find out for me, still waiting for that, the, the longer test to come back, but... But feel pretty pretty good that I'm negative right now. Knowing not knowing about our girls, um, which you know, I turns out they they happen to be both negative. We just found out they're both negative. Um, she just texted me. I shouldn't be looking at my text while I'm up here, but I did because I was waiting to hear that. But anyway, not knowing about them, that's not been easy. That's not been easy. And like many of you, like most of you, like all of you, I'm sure, man, we've been praying. We've been praying for a year. We've been praying for those who who have been sick. We've been praying for those in the school system trying to teach and our kids who are not in school like they need to be and praying, you know, had not been able to be in school like they need to be, praying for our church to be able to gather together, praying, like let's be honest, praying that all this would be gone. Like it would just be, we wake up tomorrow and be like, man, overnight, um, nobody got sick from, um, from coronavirus. It seems to be gone. Like, we would take that. We'd be happy. And praying for this mess to be over. And then this week, I was reminded from another place of Paul's words in 2 Corinthians, um, verses 7 through 10. I, I, don't, I don't know if, if you know that passage. I want to read it for you. This is Paul. He says, So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, and I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. And this is not overlay exactly on our um, situation here. Uh, we're not being persecuted. COVID is not persecution against the church. Um, it's affecting everybody. Um, but maybe it falls under hardships. Maybe it falls under calamities. I don't, I don't know. Um, but here's what I know. Um, while it doesn't exactly fit to us, um, Paul remind, was reminded in his time of difficulty when he's dealing with this thorn in the flesh, which could have been a physical ailment or just um, a particular sin he struggled with, whatever, whatever it was um, that he dealt with, he was reminded that in his weakness, in a time when he didn't have answers, in a time when he wished things were different, that the Lord's grace was sufficient. Let me remind us. God's taking care of us. He's, he's not deserted us. He's never going to forsake us. And he's been so gracious to us. He's shown us so much love and grace and mercy, and he continues to do so even now. 
We're not meeting together. But man, the Lord has been so gracious to us. He's been so good to us. Not just this past week. Not just the mountaintop that we think we've been on for since you know, the last couple of months. He's been gracious to us for 10 years and even before. But the Lord has been gracious to us when I sit back and I want to complain. And I do. I want to complain. And I want to complain that, that this isn't the way it should be. And I want to complain that we had plans or that the prayers that we're praying don't seem to be being answered because people are still getting sick and we're having to shut down and there are other bad things happening. I mean, when I, when I want to be bitter because my plans got interrupted, I'm reminded of Paul who says, the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient. I'm reminded of Paul who tells us in 2 Corinthians, God's grace is enough. It's enough. Think about this. In his grace, God sent his son to take our place. He did that. We're saved by his grace. In his grace, he sent his son to take our place. That's enough. Like, that's enough. Like, like yeah, things, things are messed up this morning, and they're going to be for a week. But you know what? In the big scheme of things, God's grace is enough. He sent his son to take our place. That's enough, right? In his grace, God keeps us and sustains us. And that's not changing, right? We're not, tomorrow, we're not going to wake up and be like, where did he go? He's not here anymore. He left us. He's no longer keeping us. He's no longer sustaining us. No, that's what he does because he's God. His grace does that. And, he's, and that's enough. In his grace, get this. This is, what, this is what keeps us going right here a little bit. But in his grace, God will bring us back together. In a week or two, he'll bring us back together. And then for eternity, he'll bring us back together. In his grace, God will bring us back together because his grace is enough. We don't need all the answers to understand that God has shown his grace to us, that he has poured his grace out upon us. We don't need all the answers to know that his grace is enough. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's hard. This week, that was not easy. It was not sitting around saying, well, you know what, man? This is, the, this is not how we planned it, but, whoo, man, the grace of God is, is keeping me going. Like, there are times when I didn't, I didn't remember that, but that's why I needed this verse, why I needed this passage. That's why I hope maybe you needed this word this morning to be reminded that his grace is enough. His grace is enough. I don't need all the answers. I just, I don't need all the answers. Because his grace is enough. So here are my final thoughts this morning. Uh, we have much more to be thankful about than we could ever complain about. And yeah, there's a hiccup in our plans. Our schedule has got a hiccup. Man, you know, I mapped out Luke for the rest of the year. We're going to have to change that up a little bit. It's okay. We'll roll with it when we're able to get back together and keep going. At some point in the future, I hope, Lord willing, we're going to celebrate 10 years. It might be 10 years in a month or it might be 10 years and two months. Well, we're going to celebrate 10 years together. And we're going to do the same things we had planned this past week. And it's going to be maybe even better. I don't know. We're going to get our Vine kids rolling back again. We're going to have our Vine students going back again. We're going to have our men and women's Bible studies coming again soon, we, we hope. Lord willing. And then we're going to get our prayer gathering back together uh, on Wednesday nights. And, and you know what? You know what? God's going to see us through. He's going to see us through. This is just a hiccup. This is just, just a little bump in our road. But it didn't surprise him. He was not surprised by that bump. He knew it was coming. And he's shown us grace for a time just like this. He's poured his grace out upon us even in a time that we don't understand. And we need to keep our trust in him, to keep our faith in him. So here's what I want you to do over the next seven days or so. Um, over the next seven days or so, we're, we're going to be able to gather soon, I hope, as the Vine Fellowship again. But over the next seven days, man, let's just bask in. Let's just celebrate in God's grace. Oh, we'll, we'll postpone our 10-year celebration. But let's just remember this week all the good things God's doing. And so here's what I want you to do. Here's my challenge to you. Don't keep those to yourself. Send those to somebody else in our congregation. Text back and forth this week. Just say, hey, look, I wanted to remind you of what God's doing right now. Because he's at work. 
He's at work. And we might not be to see each other face to face. We might not be to come in here with our mask on and join together and sing or to study his word this, this morning. But he's going to bring us back together. And this week, while we're apart, let's just remind each other of the goodness of God, the greatness of God, and what God's doing right now, this grace of God. Let's remind each other of the grace of God that we see every day that saves us, that sustains us, and that ultimately will bring us back together. That's what we do. That's what we do. Hey, look, take care of yourself. I cannot wait to see you all very soon. I want to pray for us, and then we're going to get out of here. Lord, just thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your love. Would you just remind us of those? And then allow us to to remind each other of those this week, Lord. Just a phone call or a short text. Lord, just let us remind each other what you're doing, what you're doing, Lord. We see your handiwork. And Lord, today might not have gone as we had planned, but it was how you had planned. And we trust your ways, Lord. Your ways are better than our ways. And so, Lord, would you just be glorified even more? Whatever, whatever setback we think happened today, just will you remind us in a week or two? This is not a setback. This was just you preparing us for something better. Lord, we trust you. We put our faith in you, Lord, not in ourselves. And as you reminded Paul, Lord, your grace is sufficient. Your grace is enough. Please continue to show us that grace. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope to see you real soon. Go in peace.